Okay, welcome to the December uh, webinar slash meeting of the Council of Georgia's Organizations um, monthly seminar. Um, tonight, we're happy to have uh, Ed Dotson of the School of Cooperative Individualism and with Achenbaum of Wealth and Want. Uh, we're going to this is a different format for us in the fact that we're going to allow you to raise your hands, hands and interrupt, but we ask that you interrupt after, uh, at the close of, of a slide. Um, Ed, I'm just going to let you take it from there. Okay, well, th thank you, Sue, and uh, I'll speak for Wynn and, and say that we are, we are really happy to have this opportunity to talk to you about the research work that we've done and what we've been able to put online and uh, what, we're, what we've been trying to do, I think, is to provide as, as deep and comprehensive a, a resource for anyone who's doing research and writing uh, about uh, Henry George, about the single tax movement, uh, about all of the remarkable people who've been involved in this effort you know, since Henry George uh, first began to campaign for, the, for the single tax. And it, it's a remarkable history. Um, my, my project began in 1997 uh, when I, uh, a couple years after I heard the historian Paul Gaston give a lecture on the founding of Fairhope, uh, and he described Fairhope as being organized under the principles of cooperative individualism. And I immediately responded to that term and said, that's exactly what Henry George was talking about. And so uh, a little bit later, uh, it occurred to me that I would establish a, a, uh, an education and research tool on the internet to advance those principles. And I called it, and still do call it, the School of Cooperative Individualism. So this is my homepage that you're seeing on your screen. Um, the website probably now has a roughly 60,000 pages. It's, it's grown beyond anything that I had ever imagined when I started the project. And it continues to grow. And uh, uh, I can thank Wynn for helping me in the last, particularly in the last couple of years, but, but she will tell you more about this, but she's amazing at the, um, the material that she dredges up out of cyberspace. <laughs> and, and she's provided me with a lot of raw material that I've worked with and been able to reformat and, and put on my own website. Um, so what I'm gonna to try to give you is a, uh, a deep dive into how to navigate uh, what I've done and uh, identify and locate you know, information that you're looking for and try to give you some incentive to use this as a research or a research tool and a source of material for your own potential writing. Um, there's a lot of material here for anyone who is interested in writing about, you know, the, the history of the Georgist movement and the single tax movement. Uh, but I, I should say that <clears throat> uh, for those of you who know me pretty well, you might remember that uh, I, did a master's degree in liberal arts at Temple University. So my interest is, is broad in terms of the social sciences as an interdisciplinary uh, you know, discipline. And so I've tried to make this website a lot more than just a, a, um, a Henry George website or a, or a single tax website. There is a, a wealth of information uh, available on a multi multitude of subjects that uh, uh, relate to the uh, social sciences. And well, okay, so here's the, here's the homepage. And on the left, you can see all the buttons on the left. And I have highlighted the one that says authors. This is the main place where the uh, library of, of material organized by author is available. So for example, um, I, I, I see that Ted Gortney's on here. So I'm gonna take you to Ted Gortney's page uh, in, in the library. So I hit the author's section and, and it gives me the opportunity to go 
with this drop down box to find Ted Gortney. So I go to the group that says GI to GZ, click on it and said go, go. And that takes me to this page. And when I scroll down, you can see, now you can see the listings of every author and every article that, that I have collected by that particular author. And uh, you might see some familiar names as I scroll down here. Uh, Dave Geeson, Tom Gehring, and many that you won't, you won't be recognized. Either they're part of the single tax movement history or they might simply be an academic uh, from the past or someone I've, I've uh, been able to uh, obtain their works from. So it takes a while to get down scrolling through here because uh, I didn't use the search function and I'll show you that in a second. Just under this one section, you can see all the material. Um, Ted's name appears at the end. He's got that W in his name, DGW. Okay, there's our buddy Ted. Here, here's, I have his, I have his photograph. Uh, and alphabetically, every paper that he's written, article that he's written that I've had access to, doesn't mean that I have everything he's ever written, but um, Ted, I'll probably, I, I'd say I probably have a pretty good collection of, of your writing. Okay. So all you need to do is click on one of these links and hopefully it works. And there's Ted's paper. Um, and all of this stuff is downloadable. It's not restricted. So, you know, it's downloadable and you can put it on your own computer as you want. So uh, that's that's basically how the how the uh, the author section works. It's by author's name, and and just to show you, uh, I'll look at Henry George for example. <clears throat> and you can see how much material is there. I'm going through Mason Gaffney's uh, collection, everything that Mace is, is, is wrote that was, that was made available in any uh, publication that I had access to, access to is there. So there's a lot of it. And when you look at, at Henry George's work, it's pretty exhausting. This includes uh, his books, um, articles, reprints of articles, speeches, et cetera. Okay, so just to give you an idea, here's what, here's what you'll find about Henry, written by Henry George. Um, and the source of it is, if I, you know, if I have a, a specific source to credit, they'll be, uh, be included there. Not much material from the standard yet. Um, the real issue I have with newspaper articles as Wynn knows, is that they're not always very readable. Um, if I get in, if I get something that's that's in the original print, but it is, uh, you know, it's a PDF file that is readable, then I'll put it up. But a lot of times, the newspaper articles are just, you know, not clear enough to use. So this one here, for example, from the Standard, it's a reprint, and I don't know what where it came from at some, some point, someone made this available and I was able to uh, take the text and put it into a PDF, I mean, into an HTML document. So a lot of the material is, is in PDF. Um, a lot of it is in HTML. I have basically eliminated any doc files and it, like Microsoft Word uh, and there's a good reason for that. Um, for most computers, if, you, if you're trying to open up a Word file, you have to have Word on your computer. Whereas that's not necessary for a PDF file or a HTML file. So it's a lot faster if you're, uh, it's a lot faster to use PDF files and you can save them in searchable format. 
So that's the author section. Now, everything that I've shown you uh, is almost all cross uh, posted. In the, bio, the second uh, button here, the biographical history of the Georgist movement. This is organized chronologically, but in the same, same, many of the same authors and their papers would be cross-referenced. So again, here it opens up on the, on the United States page. That's just the way I set it up because most of the source material is, is from the United States. So that's just the way I set it up to open up. But when you hit this drop-down box, it'll give you the, uh, access to every individual country that I have a page for. Uh, and so anything that that was written about a Georgist in Belgium would be under the Belgium page. So I click on that and say go and scroll down. And here's what the history of the movement tells me about people who were in any way involved in uh, the single tax in the in the Georgist movement who were from Belgium. And whatever papers, articles are there that I have been able to, to upload will be identified in blue. So that's just that's just the standard way I do it. Now, one one thing that does come up from time to time, people migrate. They move from country to country. Um, this is particularly common among uh, people who were born in Great Britain. Uh, it's amazing how, you know, people who are bo born in England end up in Australia or New Zealand or South Africa for part of their lives and move back or come to the United States and settle. So someone like Harry Pollard, for example, uh, most of you know who Harry Pollard is was he just recently died and uh, we lost a really great um, uh, teacher and, and intellect in, in Harry Stearns. But Harry was born in the UK, so I would have him listed in both places. So I, I would go to the United Kingdom and the section that covers his surname, P to Q, go there and scroll down to find him. Uh, let, me, uh, let me mention something. It would be possible, it would be difficult but possible to uh, put in tags so that you could go directly to a person's name. But what I wanted to do was to make it a little less easy to find, find someone's listing so that people would browse. You get, you, you get, you know, some, someone comes to the page and they're looking for Harry Pollard, but they see Peter Poole and they say, who's this guy, Peter Poole? And maybe they'll open a couple of his documents and read them and, and that'll trigger their history. So here's what I, I have for Harry, you know, uh, in 1951, he's a liberal party candidate, all of this comes from various source material. And then eventually he, he moved to the United States. So he would, he would have uh, in the United States when he came, like 1954, he went to Canada and then eventually settled in Southern California. So, so you'd find his, his information in more than one place. Any questions so far? Dave. You have to unmute yourself, Dave. Um, I already put in the chat. Your website URL say non-secure. What does that mean? Repeat that. So you, so when you go to your website, yes, you type in cooperative individual. The site on the left hand side is says non-secure. Um, well, I don't know what you mean by non-secure. No, it says there no. What does that mean? I'm, I'm asking you. I think it means you shouldn't enter your credit card there. 
that it, that doesn't have the certificate. Uh, uh, that, that, yeah. yeah, actually, okay, yeah. It, but it is. It does have the SSL certificate. the The host is GoDaddy, and so I I pay I I do pay the fee for that security every year. However, I don't have a PayPal account. I don't collect money for anything. I don't ask for donations. I don't ask anyone to collect money uh, or to give me money to support the website. The so reason I'm saying, because yeah. if, if this says non-secure, it kind of makes some people like not to go in there. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I haven't paid any attention I'm to I'm going Just to get on this one. Um, there are certain things like Norton that will cause a site to look as if it's unsecure. I just had that experience with um, Josh Vinson looking at Common Ground USA. And I said, uh-uh, Josh, it's, it's perfectly talked to the web guy. I, and then Josh popped in, oh, it's Norton again. So it depends on what your, where your browser is and things. And I'll, I'll, it's almost like the time of day okay, on these things. So you know, well, if, if yeah. you see it, I would go back to it later if, if, if you feel that. Well, if, if I mean, if so, what Dave's talking about is someone, you know, uh, looks for something and my, my website comes up as one possible source and it doesn't have that green check, they may, or it has a, an orange check through the browser, it might, they might not want to go there. That's a possibility. I haven't really, I haven't really had that issue but I haven't been paying any attention. Just to give you an idea, um, I mean, this is not, the website gets good tra traffic, but, but certainly not nearly as much as I would have hoped by the, just the, the, the broad amount of material. Last year, or up to this 2020, there were 18,300 unique visitors uh, with 40,000 visits. Uh, 180,000 page views, and the the list goes from top the top sources of vi visits to the lowest. And the USA was top. Second uh, num highest number of visits came from China, then the Ukraine, Great Britain, Germany, Canada, Russia, and Australia. So. Quite a few people are are finding their way to the website from different countries, and uh, but I don't. To tell you the truth, I'm too busy adding material to to build the website to pay a lot of attention to uh, the people that are coming to visit. Uh, the the one thing I, I that happens to me a lot is uh, people will find the website, find information, but want more. And they'll send me an email and ask me to help them to do the research, and and I I I I try to accommodate that, but I'm I've been hoping that that at least the the, the website would be sufficiently user friendly that people would be able to find it. So I go back to the homepage, for example, and on the homepage there is a Google search bar, and so if you use this search bar, it will take you to um, pretty, you know, Google's not 100% perfect on this, but if I put in, if I put in Wynn's name, and I hit that, here's what comes up, and it tells me uh, what on the website I have with Wynn as the author, or any other, you know, other information, and then it goes on to, to provide additional information you know, down below. But what it does is it searches the SCI website first and then goes on. So that's a tool that will help help you get to uh, material quicker than, than, than simply uh, you know, browsing the way I've been showing you. Now, um, one of the recent uh, additions to to the website has been this page here, online books. Over the years, I have scanned in uh, a fairly large number of rare books, not all about Henry George or the single tax, uh, but books I thought were important uh, for any number of reasons. And 
I put them all together on one page. They're, they're also cross-referenced in the author's section. And if they're, if they're a book that has to do with the Georgia's uh, history, they'll be cross-posted cross, uh, in the biographical history section. So there are now about 70 books here that are all available. And the way I have scanned them is a little bit tedious, but I think it, it the way I've done it is, is, is based on uh, trying to minimize the download times. If you have a 400 page book in PDF and you, you open it uh, on, online, it might take a couple minutes for your computer to bring it up. So what I've done is I've created HTML um, home pages, and then each chapter in the books are scanned individually. So you, for this book, for, for example, Postprandial Philosophy by Grant Allen, um, if I click on chapter two, that's what I get. So I can read the book online. Uh, this one happens to be totally formatted in HTML format, but, but this is pretty consistent with all of the books I have in line. So you could, you could download one chapter to your computer and go back later. Uh, but you see how f they, they come up pretty fast when you only have, have uh, each chapter separated uh, as a separate file. So this is Bob Andelson's book, Critics of Henry George. And that's similarly organized that way. This one I think is probably PDF, but let me see, yeah. So there's, there's how fast a chapter will come up when you have one chapter PDF uh, formatted. Uh, you don't have to wait and sit, wait for 400 pages to open, you know, to read one chapter. And any other questions so far? Uh, there's all sorts, of, you can see down here, the buttons on the left. Um, I have a page for everything that was written by Henry George and by Francis Nielsen. I have a page on him, um, getting away from the Georgist movement. Uh, I have, uh, uh, a whole, whole set of, of information on like Thomas Jefferson and Thomas Paine. Jefferson's correspondence. This is a, a project that I undertook oh, probably 15 years ago now. I took two volumes of Jefferson's letters and scanned them in and then organized them alphabetically by subject and also by addressee. So if you wanted to find out what letters Thomas Jefferson ever wrote to Thomas Paine, you could find that out you know, through this database. Um, it just, there's a lot of really, I, I, have, I have found that, that correspondence reveals the inner thoughts of people even more so than their papers and articles and even books. It just seems like um, they're more likely to be frank about their opinions in their letters to people. So in particular with Jefferson, uh, there's, there's a lot of really great, great insights that he brings to the table in in his in his correspondence. So that's that's just the way they're organized by subject. So you know if you clicked on P, it would be everything that began with the with the letter P. So letters to Thomas Paine, uh, personal habit habits, personal values, the physiocrats, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, what else did I want to show you? Um, okay, this is the main homepage, but there is there is a secondary homepage that has some other stuff on it that um, gets some hits, not a lot, but but um, uh, I have I have a number of different sections in the website highlighted here. 
the correspondence of Jefferson and Payne, the, uh, Henry George Page with all, all of his writings and, and, and things about him, uh, a page about the Freeman. Uh, this was the publication that began in 1920 uh, uh, through 1924 that was published by Francis Nielsen and edited by Albert J. Nock. And then it, it stopped for a while and was, was continued later. Um, uh, some, some cartoon stuff. I found this, this cartoon uh, some years ago by an unknown artist. It was in some publication. I don't know when, maybe it's, you've seen this before too. No, I haven't seen that one. Okay. But it, it, it was, it was in, uh, I forget what the source was, it, but, uh, I found it in, uh, some of you know that for, for many, many years, I taught uh, the courses at the Henry George uh, Birthplace Extension. And one thing that was great about the birthplace is that it was a repository of a lot of material from Georgia uh, throughout the decades. As, as a lot of Henry George followers got old and didn't know what to do with the stuff they'd accumulated all their, all their adult lives, they sent a lot of it to the Henry George birthplace and there was no capacity to do anything with it except put it in the attic and put it in the basement. And so uh, about 2004, um, I started to go through all the stuff to try to find out what was important to keep and what could be tossed and such. And so it was, it was, a, it was a real challenge because um, nothing had ever been thrown away. So it was, there was, you know, I can't even begin to tell you how much material. Uh, Lou Cipollone, who was the secretary at the, at the birthplace for, from 1937 until, you know, a few years before she died, um, she had student attendance records for every, every year, you know. Um, I guess she thought that they might someday have some value, but you know, it, there wasn't really any any reason to keep it. But anyway, I went through it, and finally, it took me a couple of years to get through all the material and keep what was was good. And then I started to scan it, and so a lot of the early material that, that I put on the website came from the material that was at at the birthplace. Um, and I've tried I tried to to uh, create some humor. Uh, infra, you know, some humor stuff. So I have, I have a page with, with humor and some cartoons. Um, here's, here's one that you might appreciate. This was in you know, some publication. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember if it was an early Land and Liberty or what it, what it was, but, but there's a lot of these cartoons in the in the Georgia's publications throughout the throughout the century that were they were they were pretty timely and pretty pretty funny at the same time. Um, uh, there's a, a questionnaire here that you can still fill out, um, and then it will at the end tell you how your responses match against everyone who's ever taken the survey to see if you're, you know, if you're in the majority or minority on, on issues. Um, I don't get, I don't get the uh, results. I don't accumulate them or evaluate them. It's just, it's a self sort of a, a self assessment of, of where your thinking aligns to the rest of the people who might've taken this survey over the years. And, and uh, I guess it's like about about 200 people have taken it since 1997. There's links links to other organizations, so you know all of uh, all of the organizations in our in our Georgia's community are pretty much there, and some others. And the final thing I'm going to show you, and then I'll let you ask questions if you have any, is the, the, the one part of this project that I have really not been able to keep up. And I would 
I would just I'd love to turn it over to uh, one of our one of our sister organizations who has the ability to do it is the Encyclopedia on Political Economy. Um, the value of this project is that I tried to come up with a browsable pro approach to creating an online encyclopedia, not like Wikipedia, but uh, but with categories that someone could actually go through and browse and find information on that that is either internal to the SCI website or external, and that's the most challenge the bit the, the challenging thing because. Um, anyone who has a website with external links knows that every year some of them die. And so when people get into the website and they start to look on some of this stuff, they might get these 404 error codes. And if you get too many of them, you get discouraged. So once a year, I, I do a, uh, a broken links check to see how many links are broken. And then I try to clean them up or whatever. But it's just, it's become too time consuming given my other yeah, efforts. But let's say, for example, on, on economics. Here's the page on economics. And when you scan, scroll down, you see uh, what I've, I've, I've organized this, this page by subject. So the first is Austrian economics. And there are a couple articles there that I've identified. Then the history uh, of economics as a science. A lot of articles referred to, but they're not, they're not here because I don't have the links or they were broken. Um, and further go on research organizations. So, you know, I have, have, have those listed as, as best I can. This is really, this is a project I think that has a lot of potential merit for, for uh, researchers and scholars, but I just, I, I've run out of the time to keep it up. So it's kind of stale. And uh, I think that's all I need to say. And so if you have any questions, um, feel free to ask them. Any comments, you know, pro and con. Uh, if you have difficulty with the website at all, any time, I'm always willing to hear from you. It's been because I've had comments from people that I've made changes in the format. It's, it's why on the homepage, I uh, entered the Google search search capacity to help people find things. And this, this is on some of the other pages too, on, on uh, some of the author's pages there, the, the box is there as well. <coughs> Marty, I see your yeah. hand up. Yeah, hi Ed. Uh, it's a fantastic uh, website. I'm glad I participated uh, tonight. Uh, one of the things that keeps in mind is that uh, you say that uh, you're running out of time and uh, you'd like to clean up those broken links and such, but uh, we have uh, interns at the Henry George School of Social Science in New York, and it seems like that would be a perfect uh, assignment or ongoing commitment, um, because uh, from what I've, I've seen is that this is a, a resource that... Uh, need some institutional backing, I think. Well, my friend, uh, you, you've said you said a lot and it's all it's all very welcome. Uh, if you can, you know, work that out to, that an intern would be willing to work on the project. Um, you know, I can I'd be glad to spend some time with that person and, and get them started. Yeah. And uh, and that would be great if if the school at some point wanted to take over that project. It would be easy enough to, to allow you to just uh, download those pages and have, have someone, you know, with your webmaster and an intern uh, work to keep it up. And it could be a, a page on the Henry George School's website. That okay. would not bother me at all. Like I said, I, you know, I'd love to, I think it's, I, I spent a lot of time designing the encyclopedia so it would be um, user friendly. But yeah. I'm sure that, you know, uh, in, in the hands of, of the school's webmaster, it would, it would probably, they'd probably be able to make a lot of enhancements. Yeah. Uh, I did have another question, though. I've, I'm uh, getting ready to 
uh, make a, well, do a seminar on Monday, the 21st, on the 1886 mayor's campaign. And one of the things I'm going to be uh, getting into is the phenomenon of Henry George as a representative of a political party, which uh, only existed for you know roughly about a year or so with the United Labor Party. But the thing that was um, uh, fascinating to me was the the idea of the uh, so-called uh, large tent, where you had people that may not have been 100% on board with Henry George and his single tax, primarily because maybe they didn't understand it, but that they were also socialists. And uh, I was just wondering if there's uh, any um, capturing of articles on those people that were involved with Henry George and uh, let's say 1886, 1887. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'll say yes, and I'll, I'll say probably for Wynne as well, and that she would should be able to provide you a lot of that material. But just for example, let me show you how you get there. So if I if I go to the biological history section again, and I open up the page that has Henry George's information. This is. I go to the United States, I scroll down to this, this section, GA, GI, hit go. And now I can take you down to the listing for Henry George. My browser's uh, freezing up a second there. Hang on a second. If you search on George, comma, there you go. Okay. Yeah, I, um, it's just my, my, I guess because we're using some of the bandwidth for two reasons, it's not moving quickly. Okay, so this is all chronological, Marty. Cool. Okay, yeah. And so you can see here, when I go get to the, around the election, all right. It'll, t it'll give you anything I have that that involved Henry George at that time. His articles, uh, you know, that he wrote. Here's his acceptance speech as candidate yeah. for mayor. Yeah. Um, you know, here is an article about Ro Robert Ingersoll wrote about Henry George in the New York Herald. Okay. And and you know, so <clears throat> in the as the history, as the time goes on, you know, any, any time I have a third party article about George in that period, I'll try to post it there. Yeah. That's so, good. so, and, and again, for, for other individuals, you can, you can search on them uh, who are involved in the labor movement at the time, like Terrence Powderly or whatever. If you go yeah. back to the homepage and you put in, let's see, I'll just do that one and then I'll. So go back to the home page. And I go in here and I'll put in powderly and see what shows up. Okay, so there, there you would find whatever whatever articles mention Powderly. You see, not necessarily in the title, but some of them are, are highlighted. So that'll give you some, so as you come up, as you find out who the key individuals are in that election, um, I have a lot of material, for example, about Teddy Roosevelt and uh, Abram Hewitt, you know, et cetera. So that's how you would find, that's, that's how you could, you'd find that information out the easiest. Yeah. Okay, well, appreciate it. Anything else? Anyone else? When you're on. Okay. Um, I, I'm working on, on Google Slides and I'm not all that experienced with it. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to share the right, the screen that I've, I've got this on. I'm, I'm on three different screens and 
sometimes that's confusing. I can see the presentation right now, but getting it to you is another question. Uh, hold on. It also may mean that I may have to make you a host and take Ted uh, Ed off as a host. Yeah, you, you would have to do that. Let me, let me do that. That'll help you. And uh, there we go. And okay. When. Okay. This we, tells me I'm screen sharing, but I'm not seeing it. You I have, have your well. screen. You are. We, okay. We, we see it. Good. Excellent. Okay, uh, um, and I, I've got uh, bits and pieces for some conundrums that, that, that I noticed during Ed's. So, so now I just need to, there, okay. Um, I've got a, a bunch of things to talk about as time permitting, but I wanna tell you a little bit about wealthandwant.com and then my uh, LVT fan, which is uses blog software, but isn't really a blog. Uh, time permitting, we might get into newspapers.com, Hathi Trust, archive.org, the Wayback Machine, if you're a fan of Bullwinkle and, uh, yes, who? Archie? No, that's not right. Google Books. Uh, so there's some, some other research tools out there that I want to share. Wealthandwant.com was created by, by uh, 2008, and it's no longer updated. You know, it's 60,000 documents just blows my mind. Uh, and I ran out of steam to do wealth and want the way I wanted it to wanted to. You're a sane person and I'm totally gone. Well, you, you, you'll see signs that, that I'm pretty far gone <laughs> shortly. Um, but I want it was intended to provide individualized routes through the site based on the user's interest and to serve as reference for various ideas. So it, it, again, if, if you're writing something and you need to see what Henry George said about it. Um, I've got a selection of things to, to work from. Um, there are about 230 documents in there, but some of those are, are book length. Um, 25 I call essential documents, 700 theme pages, and, uh, and then the author pages. Here's the website, it, it too is not secure. <laughs> um, it's, you'll, you'll see at the top, and, and the, the graphics, the colors are uh, pure 2006, and, and the best I knew how to do at the time, somebody else could take this in Dreamweaver and, and straighten that out with a few good templates, but it's over my head at this point. Um, but you'll, you'll, you'll recognize where, the, where the, the title came from. The essential documents are about 24 documents that just caught my attention that I thought I wanted to share uh, with somebody who, who is newly curious about this. And uh, as Ed has, has done, they're in PDF format and HTML. And here are, the, here are some of those documents. Um, and any of these would be a good starting point. They, they show the, the breadth of, of some of the names that are, are in there. Um, and 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 that's very easy to get to. You'll see some Mason Gaffney, you'll see Joe Fells, um, you'll see AJO, who turns out to be Ogilvy. Uh, for a long time, I thought that that was, um, was gonna turn out to be Mark Twain, uh, uh, something of Mark Twain's writing, but it's actually a, a, a uh, New Zealand guy named Ogilvy. Um, Walt Ryback, Bill Batt, Ted's estimating land value, um, and then on earth as it is in heaven, which is a theme that you'll see running throughout this. Uh, one unique document there uh, that you'll only find at one other place, and that's because of, of some potential copyright issues. But it's an introduction to Henry George that was written by uh, the first Georgist I ever knew, who was my grandfather. Uh, and if it was intended for academic audiences, just, it was very neutral, it uh, just tells the facts of, of what he was about. So I encourage you to look at that. You'll also find a copy of it uh, on the Schockenbach site in a section of the library called Introduction to Henry George. I think it's at the very bottom there. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, about 230 documents arranged by author. They're all in HTML format and they're presented with some additional information in the right sidebar. A number of Georgia's shorter works are included uh, as are Harry Gunnison Brown's significant paragraphs, 
condition of labor and an abridgment of that called the labor question. So let's see, um, there's stuff listed by author. Uh, you'll see one of my favorites there, uh, the Bengal primer, uh, the second item listed. And if, if you don't know Ben Gao and you're a cartoon fan, check out Ben Gao. Uh, he, he wrote uh, a number of, of, he paraphrased a number of, of George's books, uh, one uh, on political economy, one on uh, free trade. Uh, and he's just great. Buckley, Churchill, here are the themes. And there are actually about 700 of them. And these are intended to, to give you material to, to quote, uh, but they're all, also designed to draw the reader into other things. So he, here's an example of, of a theme page and we'll go to that page in a moment. Uh, this one's called Christian Ethics and it's got excerpts of George's writings uh, and some other things, uh, a collection that, known as Gems from George, which was published about 1920 by a minister in England. It's got just short quotes that he's thematically organized um, with, with their sources. Again, I'm, I'm trying to, again, I'm trying to draw people in uh, and, and hope that, that in their browsing, they'll find something that intrigues them. Um, Bishop Nolte of Meath, uh, Back to the Land, which was featured in the Standard in 1887. Fells, True Christianity and My Own Religious Beliefs, which is a favorite of mine. So let, let's go to, to that, 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 here's that page. I'm gonna start out with just some basic introductory material that tries to pose a question that might intrigue somebody getting there. And then uh, excerpts from the land question with, with the key stuff folded. The crime of poverty, thou shalt not steal, wages of labor, and again, you, you'll, you can pick out the, the, the good quotes that will, will serve your purposes. The Land for the People, an 1889 speech, which mentions Dr. Nolte. Um, Concentrations of, of Wealth Harm America, which is uh, part of social problems. Uh, what, uh, and here's that Gems from George. That, that we'll give you some, some of the, the ones that are relevant to, to Christian ethics. Nolte saying, and, and this is interesting, human slavery was once generally accepted. Even Christians recognized slavery. The world's approval cannot justify injustice. Land of every country, the common property of its people. Can you imagine George's pleasure when he finally met this guy and, and found somebody who was, was writing you know, very similar kinds of things? Um, Joseph Fells. Now let's go back up to the top here. Over on the right are, are related themes. So if something in here catches your fancy, you might find something also relevant over on the right. And each of those is a theme. Um, Lord's Prayer, let's see what happens there. Um, oh, pref preface to Ogilvy's essay. Well, that's the Ogilvy that, that, who wrote that piece on slavery. Um, 1889 speech, Thy Kingdom Come. Uh, some of these are short and some of them, some of them are quite long, but they, they get you into to George's thought. Um, let's see. Now let me go back there. So, so th there, are, there are all of the, the other themes that are referenced on that particular page. I want to share with you a tool because I'll, I'll make mention of it occasionally later on. Something called Abbey Screenshot Reader. And when Google Books went to, to, to um, OCR, all the books they did in the various libraries, they used a product called Abbey. And I think it's a Russian software. Hmm. There is a subset to it. And I'm sure that they had a professional version. That there's a, a uh, Abbey Fine Reader, I think it's called, is what's available at a reasonable price. But there's this subset of it called Abbey Screenshot Reader. And it, it allows one to, to, to select a piece of text. And actually, I'm, I'm just 
uh, take it, put an image on a clipboard or uh, and capture that and, and then paste it anywhere you want to paste it. Or you can, can get, grab the text. I use this thing dozens of times a day. Um, when I watch a PowerPoint in a Zoom session, I save images or OCR text of the slides whose content I want for my notes. So we'll, we'll hit on that this occasionally. Um, and, that, and that will do that regardless of uh, the kind of source? I mean, anything that appears, anything on, the appears on the page. Yep, uh, yes, it, it, it is really pretty. Now, uh, one, one other question. If you do, if you, if you capture an image and then you want to mm -hmm. use that image elsewhere, can you resize it? Will it yes. allow you? Okay. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's just a very nice piece of software. <laughs> um, so, uh, I think you told me about it before and I, uh, I'm stuck in, I'm stuck in my technology, the level <laughs> of technology that I'm, you know, capable of using, I'm stuck there. Well, th this, this this one's, uh, can make one very productive. I've, I've, I've probably used it 70 or 80 times today. The, the, you know, the days vary. Okay, second site is uh, LVT fan. Land value taxation is the only tax worthy of a fan club is how that, that name came about. And it's how I started to sign um, comments I put on newspaper articles and other places. I'm not on Facebook or any other social media except a local thing called Next Door. But uh, pieces that intrigued me, I started putting on there. And it has 1,500 posts. Unfortunately, OK, on the, the, uh, cat, the, the themes on Wealth and Want, 700 is just more than I could ma manage to add anything more to. This one's uh, just hit the limit of 100 categories, so I have to do some rejiggering. Uh, but I'll, I'll show you a couple things on there. Uh, one of the features uh, and a reason to go check it out is, is a, a piece on seeing the cat. I've gathered together all the material I could find on seeing the cat. Uh, and there's also a, another section of the website that's called the Earth for All calendar. Here's seeing the cat. And it starts out with some material that, that I, I took from the HG archives website uh, that Alex Lau did for, for, for the Henry George School. These were two things that, that I saw in the birthplace uh, in Philadelphia. And then went into to Judge McGuire's story and uh, the backstory that, that Lewis Post provided in 19, uh, book published just after his death by Schockenbach, the prophet of San Francisco. And some various stories, something from the standard that illustrates it, uh, that's from November, 1887. And then some things I found uh, via newspapers.com, which I'll get to later on if we have time. But these are, these are just things that I clipped from there. And in fact, to copy them into this, I think I, I used uh, Abby Screenshot Reader. Um, and I mentioned Ben Gao a little bit earlier. This, this is one of the few Ben Gao cartoons in, that I found in the standard so far. Uh, but you, you, you'll see the cat standing here uh, and, and the workers, between the workers' legs. Uh, ben Gao uh, seems to have discovered George in about 1886. He, he was a cartoonist in Toronto came from a publishing family. All these interesting people were in publishing in one way or another. Uh, and he's a fabulous artist. The, 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 the weekly was called The Grip and it was just unbelie unbelievably well illustrated. Uh, so we'll see a little bit more of his stuff later on. Here's a and, rendition. And, from, and you, from can find, you can find out more about Bingo in my biographical history uh, pages. Oh, good. I, I, I will, I will go look at, um, here's another rendition of, of, have you seen the cat? The cat's sitting in the tree looking at, at the, the owl that's land monopoly. Uh, there was a single tax cigar for a while uh, that, that, uh, mentioned, have you seen the cat? 
Um, there's a mention of the landlord's game. I've only found this one single reference that Lizzie McGee had another game called Have You Seen the Cat? Hmm. Uh, and and that, that was in, um, let's see, that was in the, that ad was in the Fairhope Courier. We'll get to that in a little while. Uh, here is, uh, let's see, where was this? This appeared, okay, in the, the up-to-date primer, which Schockenbach republished. It came out in 1896 or 97. Schockenbach republished it, and some others have too. And do you see the cat in the middle of this one? I've not, yes. been, able to, yeah. <laughs> I've not been able to make out all the words in the drawing yet. Mm. And then here's the final lesson in that primer. And again, he, he, and this primer was done entirely in words of one syllable. I we can I, inter interrupt you for a second yeah. because, you know, I, um, I wondered whether, you know, having a lot of people wrote articles of how I came to see the cat. And I, I figured that would just confuse people who weren't familiar with <laughs> the single tax movement. So, Whenever I've come across those articles and I've and I've uploaded them, I've changed the title to "How I Came to Embrace the Principles Embraced by Henry George." <laughs> so I've got, I've got a small collection of, of how I've see, how I saw the cat articles, and not online, but in my files. Well, uh, you could attach it to this if, if, if you know, pull pull this in if you if you chose. Um, but th there's the cover for the up-to-date primer, and, and this is a very different rendition of the cat. And the cat will go for the rat, the rat being this, uh, the, the cat being labeled single tax and the rat land monopoly. Um, now let me go back up. Over at the left, you'll see the categories. Let me see if I can blow this up a little bit. Um, and these are all, the size of the words in there is how many different posts involve that. Earth for All, the calendar that was published in 1903, and it was what we call today a birthday book. For, for each page, that there, um, on each page there might have been January 1st, January 2nd, January 3rd, and a few quotes for each day. Uh, and uh, someone was kind enough to scan a copy of it for me, and, and, and uh, I shamelessly you know, put the, posted those over the course of 13 months, because it, af after they, they finished, it was compiled by Ernest Crosby, um, and after he finished doing, doing it and publishing it, um, he came up with another month's worth, so he called that Unidecember, so that's the 13th month, but uh, there are quotes there that, that seem quite plausible to me, but that I've never found anywhere else. And si since I finished posting those, which was some years ago, uh, I found uh, you know, other people uh, who were seeing the same kinds of things. There was some, I've forgotten where I saw the reference to, to Cross Creek, but I, I ended up getting a used copy of the book and I read through the whole book before I got to the last three pages, which is where she spoke of, of something that sounded distinctly Georgist. How should one man say that he owned any piece of it? If he worked with it, labored to bring it to fruition, it seemed to me that he, that at most he held it in fief. The individual man is transitory, but the pulse of life and of growth goes on after he's gone, buried under a wreath of magnolia leaves. No man should have proprietary rights over land who does not use that land wisely and lovingly. When, um, can I ask you, how many hours a week do you estimate you spend working on your your information gathering and wet and all this work i can't estimate um, and a lot of it doesn't go online a lot of it goes into files on my computer which i am happy to share with, with anybody who's interested uh you probably need a hundred hundred gig uh thumb drive but um you know if, if there's a, a time when we're getting together bring the drive because i always have my computer with me <laughs> um, and, and I've actually posted very little to LVT fan in the last six months. 
uh, a few things have gone there, but, but I've been concentrating on, on other things. Um, let's see. Okay, let me go back to this. Uh, next thing I wanted to, to bring up uh, in terms of research, but any questions on, on these websites? Because I'm going to move on to some other things. Okay, and I'm only seeing a few faces, so if somebody's raising their hand. I have a quick, crazy question. Okay. Some uh, ladies' books, gothic novels, have talking about the cat. Do you refer to that? Pat? Have, have what about the cat? In other words, there, are, there is at least one romantic author who talks about George. Uh, now, that she happens to have a very famous, well-known George brother-in-law. Uh, uh, is this Kat no, Catherine, Kathleen Norris? I believe it is. It's, it, it's, it's Joseph it, Thompson? Uh, jo uh, uh, Joseph Thompson? No, this is actually Nick Tiedemann's sister-in-law who writes Gothic novels. And I can't tell you where I have that book, but she, she, uh, her heroine says it's all about the land, nothing but the land. Oh, uh, I need to get that title. Yeah, um, I would ask uh, Nick because it was actually dedicated to him, him, and that was that gave it away. Okay. And, uh, so. Okay. Well, well, I, speaking I, of speaking of, of Nick Tiedemann, some of you may not know that his family involvement in the single tax movement goes back to the 1800s. He's fourth yeah. generation, I think. Yeah, and I've, yeah. I've, I've collected a lot of information on the member, individual members of his family. Some of them were really good writers and, and others involved in the political arm of the movement during those decades. But, but uh, someday Nick should be enticed to write a family autobiography with a, a, you know, to capture all this yeah, I've got, a, a, when you talk about uh, fiction, uh, I've got a, a um, collection of maybe eight or, or nine PDFs of uh, Georgia's fiction, uh, various books, From Earth's Polar Center, I think is one of them, um, Our Sister, something or other, Commonwealth, uh, that's not quite right, but again, any- Henry George Jr.'s book, he, he wrote a novel. Yeah. Um, actually, I don't have it sitting in that file, and I should. Um, okay, let's see. I keep detouring. Another tool that, that I encourage you to take a look at, but it's dangerous. Newspapers.com. And be before we started this session, uh, the, um, somebody raised the question of, of, of where... Um, uh, well, what was the phrase? I've, I've lost track. It was in, in the discussion. Uh, um, um, mother of necessity. Uh, necessity is the mother of invention. Uh, and so I pulled up newspapers.com and searched on that phrase <laughs> and sorted things by uh, oldest, oldest to newest. And there's a reference in 1739 in the Derby Mercury to, to uh, necessity is the mother of invention. And the next thing I see is 1786 in the Freeman's Journal from Dublin. So it, it, it's a neat, neat tool for all sorts of, of odd queries. Hundreds of newspapers, mostly in the US, but also in the Canada and the UK. And I think there are a few in Australia, but I don't usually, I guess my searches don't necessarily bring those up. Brooklyn is very well represented and that was a hotbed of Georgist activity. Philadelphia, there's a good deal of material. Uh, Fairhope Courier is there. Hmm. And, and th that's a remarkable resource when you're, you're looking for inf information about individuals. Because many of them passed through town. And I think it was E.B. Gaston, who was Paul's grandfather. Yeah. That's, okay. Um, interviewed them all and, and maintained correspondence with them all and re would report the correspondence. And I've learned things about Arden from there because of the correspondence back and forth. <clears throat> um, there was a, uh, the Leavenworth Labor News in, in Kansas. Kansas was a hotbed, uh, the, but for, for a few years, the Leavenworth Labor News kind of echoed things coming that were in the standard. Uh, and then um, it gradually moved to be a, a um, Knights of Labor, I think it was, uh, vehicle. 
Ben, are, are, are these articles like uh, searchable? I mean, can you put in words and it'll search the articles and highlight them? Yeah. 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 Uh, and if you, if you can figure out how to do it, and I haven't figured out how to do it, uh, if, if, if you follow me, you'll find on, on there, you'll, you'll find articles I've clipped. Uh, and I only know that because I, I follow Bill Batt and I find articles that he clipped, but I haven't figured out how, you know, how to follow anybody other than, than, um, than what are the occasional emails I get. There's the Freeland, Pennsylvania Tribune. Freeland um, is south of Wilkes-Barre and north of Hazleton along the Northeast Extension somewhere. Uh, and the, for at least five years, there, there was some good stuff in there. Oops, let me um, there were syndicated columns in there that, that ran in, in many newspapers across the country. There was a single tax department. There was a single tax column. Henry George Jr.'s letters from Washington uh, Bolton Hall's tax reform studies column, and then things about the various Georgia's lecturers who were on tour, Henry George himself on tour, and there were many speeches reported verbatim. Uh, Lewis Post would, would tour and, and, and spoke. Sacramento Bee was added in the last couple of year, last year or so, and, and that, I think I've mined it pretty thoroughly. So, uh, you know, that, that's a resource, because McClatchy, said that had he been a younger man, he would have written PNP himself. But, <laughs> but uh, 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 interesting reading. Okay, another resource, hgarchives.org, uh, which is, is uh, avail still available at that address, uh, but also from the uh, Henry George School website. And it's the historical collections that are, that are most interesting. Uh, and it's, it's an astounding collection. I've, I've mined it thoroughly and thrown things in, into my own filing system. Uh, but but here, here are the first few. The Glenn collection is, is, is fabulous. Uh, Manhattan Single Tax uh, League, uh, which was a very active group. Uh, Massachusetts, and that, that would be Phila Brown. Uh, Joseph Dana Miller, we'll, we'll come to it in, in a little while. Um, various state and local single tax clubs. And you can, again, on newspapers.com, you can find a lot of information about them. But if you're looking for something, come email me because that, uh, I may be able to just send you a pack of stuff. The Fells Commission, uh, Charles LeBaron Geller, who, who as best I can tell was a second generation Georgist because there was another Geller around Henry George's time. Geller was reissuing as tracts a lot of Henry George's things. Commonwealth Land Party, that was John C. Lincoln, Carrie Chapman Catt, um, running uh, for president and vice president in the early 20s. Uh, the Freeman, um, and all, I think all the issues were there. A, a remarkable collection. Oops. The IU. Uh, American Association for Scientific Taxation turns out to be a Schockenbach thing. Uh, and it was created by Charles Johnson Post, son of Lewis Post. Writings of Harry Gunnison Brown, who was the one who wrote that, uh, who did the first, one of the first abridgments in 1928. And a section about John C. Lincoln, the Intermountain Single Tax Association, which I think was Jim Busey's. Um, just an amazing range of stuff. Okay, another tool. Pathogens. Can I interrupt you for, for before I forget? Um, as I've been going through the issues of land and freedom, I find references to a lot of people who did radio broadcasting, in particular, mm -hmm. a fellow named Charles Ingersoll in New York. He had a, um, a regular uh, radio show that was broadcast over a whole range of stations. And I've, I've been trying to find out whether or not there's any archive of these, these broadcasts, if they were recorded and saved. Um, there's, I, I, I haven't been able to find anything. I just wondered if you 
had any, if you've discovered any sources of all these, you know, old radio broadcasts that have been uh, archived anywhere. Uh, well, actually, we'll get to us. Uh, I'm not aware of any, but but one of the places that might have it is something we'll get to it in a couple of minutes. Okay. Um, I've got files on a couple of Ingersolls. It's Robert Ingersoll. There's Charles is the one I was. There, I'm there were two. At. There were two brothers, uh, and they, they had a watch company that started out in Baltimore. And then I think moved to Philadelphia, and they were regular advertisers in in a number of the Georgia yes, right, periodicals. Right, right. Um, and I, I've got folders on each of them, and I I can't keep, quite keep them straight. There was also an Ingersoll, um, and I think he was Colonel Ingersoll, and probably not related, who gave the talk on Fourth of July in, in 1877 in San Francisco, right after Henry George's. Uh, speech that was the one that, that we, we see in, in book, reflected in book 10. Um, and he's somebody I need to research more because uh, maybe I just need to look at Wikipedia. To, to and and you know, context. one of the challenges is that they often uh, printed articles by these people with just their their first initial. So you'd, you'd see C. Ingersoll or and if there are more than one C. Ingersoll, you have a hard time, you know, I have that problem with the Tiedemanns. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I have a Tiedemann genealogy uh, that my step-grandmother did because she, uh, just a brief biologic, bi biological, biographical detour. Uh, my grandparents, paternal grandparents took the Henry George course in Northern New Jersey in 1939. Their teacher, uh, was a fellow named Archie Madison, and his wife uh, was, was Jesse Madison. Uh, Jesse turned out to, to, Jesse's father and my grandfather's mother were best of friends in Southern Virginia, Chatham, Virginia. I don't know when they quite discovered that connection, but, but um, Archie and, and Jesse became best friends, my grandparents after my grandparents had taken all, all the courses and later they split. Archie went up to, to the Boston school. Jesse went out to Chicago and and as I see it, she kind of became part of the Tiedemann clan. Mm -hmm. And so she she knew all these people. Um, and I've met a few a few of the you know the younger generations, but they're older than I am of, of the you know the, the, who were not Georgist particularly. Uh, but but I did have her do a genealogy for me because I couldn't sort it out. <laughs> um, Kathy Trust. It's this is based at the University of Michigan in some way. It's got a lot of materials that aren't in the public domain, so they're there. And I guess as the public domain advances forward, they, they shift them from one side to the other. But it's kind of neat that, that you can search the things that you can't see. You, Remember the old story about the the, um, the title lawyer who wanted to needed to trace the title for some oil lands in Louisiana back further yeah. than 183. Yeah, got it all the way back to God. Yeah, all the way back <laughs> to God via the Pope. <laughs> um, well, I was trying to find the source of that, and I've. I've been able to trace it back through some, some law textbooks, but it actually goes back at least to, to 1939. Uh, somebody wrote a book called Embarrassing Riches, where it was a title like that. Uh, well, I have to tell you, I, I just recently saw that, that story in 1937 or 1938, one of the issues of Land and Freedom. Okay. So I don't know where it came from, but I, but the story was there and somebody, somebody re, re you know, re reprinted or reposted. Yeah. Well, and and uh, I, I did see it in two other places, uh, newspapers.com, I did see it in a couple of other places in 1938, I think it was. Can I, Hathi Trust, do you have to, is there a licensing fee you have to pay to get access? No, HathiTrust.org, uh, and anything you can see there. Uh, you don't have to register. I, I've tried to use it, and I, 
I'm trying well, you, to can't, you, you can't download a, the PDF of, of a book from there unless you're uh, affiliated with the university. I see. And maybe your public library would be sufficient. And I haven't haven't gotten around to trying that. A couple of times where that was the only place I could find a, a, a book, a PDF, I asked somebody who did have an academic affiliation to get it for me. Well, I'll tell you what my workaround was a couple of times. Yeah. I saved it page by page. It would, uh, it, would, it would allow you to save the screen page, but it wouldn't allow you to save the whole document. So I tediously saved it page by page and then merged it into a document. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll show you in a moment with, the, with the, my get around for it. Uh, but you can look at, at one page or two pages, facing pages at a time. There's also a plain text option. Um, that, and I'll, I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, tips and tricks, use that screenshot reader to flow mm -hmm. the plain text of each page. Um, if you try to do the same, if you try to use the plain text as it is, just copy and paste, then you're, then you're getting all the line breaks out at the end of each line. That's a royal pain. It's also true at archive.org. But if, if you use screenshot reader, it'll flow the text, you know, but, uh, in each paragraph. Uh, and let, let me go over to this. Um, here's, a, I did a search on Lewis F. Post there, and one of the first things that comes up, I believe, is, is his FBI files, which, which were actually only re released fairly recently. So it's not that first one, because it wasn't 1971. Um, and, mm. and actually, the example I'm going to show you is, is from the, this, toward the bottom of the page, uh, something written by George Record. Um, and, and here's, and this is probably, oh, 20 or 30 pages. It's not, no, 16 pages. But if you look up in the upper right-hand corner, you have the choice of how to look at it. And my get around uh, was a little different from Ed's. So I went to the plain text and then, um, and then you, you scroll, go, go page by page. And that, then uh, using a screenshot reader, I, I would grab the text. <clears throat> and then paste it. it. It gives me this little trill and it says, yes, I've done that. Then I just uh, paste it in, into a document. And then I go to the next page and you know, I, I, I get a chance to read while it's doing its thinking and it, it, it moves along okay. Uh, and sometimes that's the only place to to, to, to get certain do certain right, documents. Right. Okay, let me go back here. Um, okay, archive.org. Are you familiar with this one? My favorite. Okay, uh, and it's great for books and other materials. And I'm, I'm when you asked Ed about the archive of broadcasts. Have you have you looked there to see whether they have? Yeah, them? yeah, nothing's okay. shown up yet. Okay, fine. Um, the people who run this uh, also run a used bookstore of, of, of interesting things that, that I occasionally see on uh, books on on eBay. Uh, one of my standing every morning, I get emails of of my, of my various eBay standing alerts searches and that gets me to all sorts of interesting books and one of the sellers is the same people who who do archive.org but they also have on there the wayback machine and robots search websites and archive them from time to time or they don't but are others on the on the call familiar with this have you ever used archive.org it, it, it's, it's really yeah. it's really a valuable it's really a valuable research source i mean uh if you're looking for anything and i've i probably have now uh downloaded several hundred documents from it you know that yep it's fabulous now the wayback machine ed might take care of a problem you were having with broken links mm. when a website's gone away if you go, to, if you enter the, that, uh, I think I've got a page open here somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's the um, access page. Yeah, if, if you enter the name of that website, that, that uh, oops. No, Are you up, up uh, above? Up, yes, up above. Um, enter the name of the website there. And then it will, it will tell you the days and times that it took snapshots of that website. So if you know you saw it four, four years or more ago, you just go back you know, to, to 2016 and pick one of those and see if you can find it. And, and then have your link go to that longer thing that would ha say archive.org slash 2016 04, you know, 11 at 1139 PM. And then it's the, the material that, that you already have in your link. So, and I, I've, I saw that in footnotes uh, to various things long before I learned how to use it myself, but it's, it's pretty neat. Let's see. Um, okay. Oh, back here. What Wynn and I are showing you is how to be a nerd extraordinary. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Google Books. Um, public domain materials. Oh, I've got a Google Assistant here, and it's now telling me I it's found some bookstores near me. Um, books sometimes get picked up and reprinted, at which point Google may remove the PDF and other copies. Therefore, save it when you find it, because it might not be there when you want it. Um, but the good news about that is that if you like hard copy, you may be able to find reprints that lack the dust that may come with an old book. I don't mind the dust, but I, I know people who do. Uh, and sometimes you can get large print versions of, of, of old books, if, the, uh, which, if that's handy. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, take you over to this. Um, searching for the single tax review for 1911. I just kind of pulled that out of thin air. The, actually, the first record that get is Happy Trust. Uh, but if you, if you go over to more here and go to books, that, then you, you get to, to the bound volumes that Google Books has scanned. And uh, as Ed's pointed out, you often when you're browsing, you may find a lot of other interesting stuff that then you get distracted from what you're trying to trying to do in the first place. And two days later, <laughs> yes, you're back to trying to focus on what you originally was working on. Well, my, my son tells me that I've got far too many windows and far too many tabs open on my computer. I tell him, but it's called Windows. <laughs> and uh, right now I've got three, six, 10 Chrome windows and each of them probably has 10 or 12 tabs open. But it's because I, I, I find something and I, I don't want to bookmark it because I only want to go back there once. And so they, they sit and wait for me. But, uh, I, I think that we're in the third one, we're seeing uh, Philip Brown's collection, but I'm not altogether certain. Anyway, let's, let's go over to single tax review. Uh, and you know that you can download uh, the book. Okay, if, if you see over to the left, ebook free, then uh, there are several formats of it available. Otherwise, it'll say, find it in a bookstore. You know, get, get this book in print, which is often hopeless. But if you go up here, you can download the PDF. Uh, that may ask you to do a, a catch-up, capture, that sort of thing. Or you can download plain text, uh, which is sometimes very convenient. Let's see. actually let's go look at that. Yeah. Um, and since I searched on single tax, all, all the instances of those two words are there. But this, I, I just have a comment. I prefer to download the PDFs to keep it in the original format. Absolutely. So that if someone comes across a document, they can be assured that I haven't edited it in some way. Yeah. So, so keeping, I try to keep it in the original format whenever possible for that reason. Uh, yes. Uh, 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 my priority is to keep the PDFs, but there are times when I, I also want want to have the, the editable text. And also, some of those PDFs are not searchable, uh, which is a royal pain. So sometimes there are things for which I've 
I've later found a searchable one because they, they went to several different academic libraries. And so there might be one searchable and four not. Uh, but you can download the, the EPUB uh, or the PDF. And even that, that size PDF downloads pretty fast. Uh, so let's see. Is that, okay. And um, here's the, the um, table of contents of one of the issues of, of, of uh, single tax review. The single tax review was started in around 1998, no, 1900, by Joseph Dana Miller. And he was one of the original um, people working on the standard in 1887. And he carried through with, with the single tax review, starting it as a quarterly, and then it went to bi-monthly. Um, and in 19, is it 26, Ed? 24. 24. He retitled it to Land and Freedom. Mm. Uh, and it went on as long as he lived. At 19, he died in 1939. And well, it actually continued until 40, 40 mid 42, I think. And then the Henry George School uh, took over and changed it to the Henry George News. Well, and I think there's a little more to the story. I, yeah. I, um, I'm sure there that, is. <laughs> that, that Schockenbach, uh, Robert Schockenbach, had um, left him something in his will. And that, that the foundation then felt a responsibility to subsidize this during Miller's lifetime. But, but after he was gone, they, I, I think they, uh. they paused that and, and, and they went a different direction with the American Journal of Economics and Sociology. But, but the Single Tax Review and, and Land and Freedom are just a fabulous resource and, and just great reading. Uh, um, yeah, I, one comment about Joseph Dana Miller. In almost every issue of, that, that he wrote in, he did book reviews. And at least two books, maybe three in every issue. And you can imagine, you know, the amount of, of reading he had to do to write these book reviews and, and do two or three of them in every issue of the magazine, as well as the editorial writing. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, this person was phenomenal. Just during his lifetime, amazing, bright, Absolutely. talented yeah. person. Yeah. Let's see. Um, okay, I showed you the Internet Archive. I'll come back to that. Let me see what else I've got over here that I wanted to cover. Um, some of the journals out there, uh, the, the public, if, if you're trying to scan various eras, the public is certainly a resource started by Lois Post in 1898 uh, and continued later when Post uh, joined the Wilson administration by um, Stoughton Cooley and his wife, Mary, and Mary Fells, I believe. I think I've got those three names right. Uh, single, and it was not explicitly Georgist. It was, their intention was, was different, um, but it, Great resource, Single Tax Review and Land and Freedom, Land and Liberty, uh, which uh, is archived right back to, to its founding, uh, starting with land values in 1894, and another Scottish uh, publication that is my, my memory right now. But you can download all those from the Henry George Foundation website, and the newest issue just came out uh, in the last couple weeks. And David Triggs uh, is writing a rebuttal to the, the editorial piece. Uh, the, the, yeah. Uh, we're just, we discussed that in, a, in the study group th this week. And if you have time to, to, on a Friday to participate with these people, they're fabulous. Another resource is The Great Adventure uh, and the Henry George Standard. I think the Henry George Standard was at Barton Geller, or Geller, was, uh, uh, I said the second generation. Great Adventure was, was in California uh, and also spawned another uh, periodical called Tax Facts. And many issues of that, I think, are on the uh, Henry George Archives website. The Arena, uh, done by Benjamin Flower, also featured a lot of Georgia's things. Christian Socialist, um, at least in that era, that, that the ones I've collected 
are, are in that, that era. The Freeman, both runs, 20th century with Hugh Pentecost, who was uh, featured greatly in the first year of the standard. Uh, and I haven't figured him out yet, but interesting guy. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, there was a question that, that, that uh, Sue sent on to Ed and me uh, that, that I just saw uh, maybe an hour and a half before we, we, we logged on here, uh, asking the question about uh, why Henry George uh, used the term the single tax. And so I went looking for, for the references and, and I, what I went to was newspapers.com. And the first place I see, see it uh, with his name was an 1885 serialization of uh, protection of free trade that appeared in the San Francisco Examiner. Uh, and, and it was actually quoting, okay. And then two years later in the standard, uh, probably late January of the first year, uh, they, they picked up something from the Detroit Labor Leaf uh, that spoke of a single tax on land values. So, so you know, the, these are tools that you can go to, to, to solve those. If only I knew X, well, you can get a pretty good handle on X from the newspapers. Yeah, and that may be it. That is it. Uh, I did want to say, um, Marty, you'd asked about things about uh, socialists uh, and Henry George, and uh, I've got a, a lot. Of, I've got a folder on so so. You know, is this socialism? And in fact, actually, on both my blog and on Wealth and Want, I have have material related to that. Um, um, So, so trying so to make I, the distinction. Okay, so uh, how do I get to the wealth and want? Uh, Wealthandwant.com. One word. Huh? Yes. Yeah. And then if, I think if you put a colon after that and and um, type in the word socialism, it should take you pretty much to that this this page. Okay. So there's a little bit about George, what what he had to say. Um, and then the, the debate he had with Heinemann um, in 1889. Is that right? Yeah, I think it is. Would he have a debate with? Uh, with, with Henry Heinemann, a, 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 Heinemann. Okay. a British socialist. He and George became great friends when, when uh, Henry, George, and, and Annie w went to London. They, they would stay with the Heinemanns. Neither of them ever convinced the other of, of their point of view. But, uh, and they had a, a public debate, which is linked here. And uh, I, if you if you if you go to the SCI homepage and you just type in the word socialism, it'll bring up a lot of, of articles that that mention that. And there was, George also debated the socialists in the United States a number of times, particularly while he was campaigning. Yeah. Serge Shevitz, I think, was. Uh, one in 18, uh, late in 1887, I believe. Um, but I was looking for, I was collecting things that kind of make the distinction between our ideas and, and socialism. So, so that, that's a lot of what you'll find there. And then if you go to, to LBT fan, and let's see, uh, I think I probably, is this socialism? And, and there are 19 posts there. Uh, now this one, um, uh, I borrow very heavily from Ed uh, when I see, see something that, that intrigues me. Uh, this was by A. Freeland. Now, I don't know about that A, but uh, Lewis Freeland Post wrote some some things in the standard that were um, signed Lewis L E W I S Freeland, and they, they and they were very much in the spirit of the Squirrel Island. There was one about crows, um, so the, the, this is very plausibly 
uh, Lois Freelet post. Uh, and this was pu published by the Fells Fund. Uh, and then various other pieces I found uh, George Bernard Shaw, 1885 speech on private property and privilege. You know, there, there, I think George wrote somewhere that, that there were many people who were, who wanted, well, in, in progress and poverty, he, he described the, the Leviathan, the great Leviathan, and people who wanted to get there more directly, uh, went, went with socialism, and he said, no, it's got to grow organically. Um, the collectively are earned increment. I, I find things in, in a lot of weird places uh, and, and the yeah. blog is, is a, pla a place to, to organize them. Lois Post on laissez-faire. Uh, at, at the time, I, at least I assumed that, that it, it tied into socialism. Yeah, uh, Marty, you, you might want to look at the at writings by Frank Chaudhara. Do you know that name? Uh, how do you how do you spell that? C H O D O R O V. Frank. Frank, Frank Shadaroff was the director of the Henry George School from 1937 to 1942. He was a vehement anti-socialist and pacifist, uh, and was discharged from the Henry George School when the First World War was underway because of his anti-war sentiments and written expressions. Interesting. And it was Chodorov, who, who uh, William Buckley's before. father hired to tutor his sons, which is how uh, Bill Buckley came came to embrace Henry George's ideas. Oh, oh. boy. Interesting. Oh, and here, here's some of that Earth for All calendar on, under the whole socialism piece. So the October 4th reference, uh, in the early ages of society, it would have been impossible to maintain the exclusive ownership in a few persons. Uh, in, in what at first sight, what seems at first sight an equal gift to all, land, a thing to, to which everyone has the same claim. Now that's not a not a great sample of, of it, but William Mars, who was a socialist, uh, was in that Earth for All. Um, quotes from Payne and Mormontel. <clears throat> Henry George's teaching in a nutshell, to deprive men of the power to take what belongs to others. Okay, I think that's all I've got. Does this raise any other questions? Oh, I, I should tell you one other thing. Um, the standard. I've been working uh, on it, not as much as I should be, but, but I'm itching to get back to it when I free up some time. Um, and I've been through most of the first year of it, annotating it. Right now, all that sits on, on my Google Drive and my computer. Um, and I've discovered in, in the last few months that Rick DeMar has put up on, on his um, Facebook page. Let me, uh, and I'm not on Facebook, so I'm not my, my um, where I normally go, but he's got all the issues of the standard there that you can download. And that's from the, well, the DVDs that Schockenbach used to sell. Um, the, the, those, these are PDFs, they're each 20 megabytes. They're, they're, they're huge. Some are very readable, some are not. And, and I'm, what I'm working on is annotating them, first transcribing or correcting somebody else's uh, transcription and then annotating to, to, to make connections from one issue to another. And I hope that I need to get back into learning, knowing how to use WordPress. And once I get going there, then, then I'll be starting to post those. But the, they're each, 50, each issue is 50,000 words. And they're just rich. But you know, what puzzles me or is the challenge really is, I mean, I hope you can, by listening to Wynn, to see the richness of, of material material that's there to be worked on and how do we interest writers and scholars academics even college students you know to to look for this stuff and to take up um you know to to take it and, and run with it 
write articles, write books, et cetera. I mean, that, that's really what the primary objective I have it, is to try to make, uh, make the information as user-friendly as possible for people to use in, in their own writing and research. And we have somehow a way to better promote what we've done. Uh, and I haven't figured out exactly the answer. Advertising may be you know, part of it. Um, like I said, you know, um, 40,000 visits for the year is okay. But uh, you know, it would be great if it was 400,000 visits instead of 40,000. Yeah. I, I keep thinking that, that one of the handles, in this country anyway, has got to be the religious angle. And that's part of why the standard intrigues me so much, because it's both the labor union side of it and the, the Dr. McGlynn side. Well, for example, okay, when that's a perfect example. Um, you know, I run across articles by ministers, rabbis, and priests who uh, embrace Henry George's principles. It, some, <laughs> someone, it would be great if someone would collect those and bring them together in a book. Uh, 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 if you send me material, I, I've, I've got a file of clergy stuff. Uh, and uh, no, I, 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 that's, that's not asking me to send you the material is not going to work. It's scattered throughout the website based on the, okay. the individual author. I mean, there, there are plenty of them, you know. Uh, are they denoted by reverend or something that would, would make clear that, that it's, would either the title or the, the, the name? Um, to a certain extent. I mean, when okay. I list in the biographical history section, I don't put, I don't usually put rabbi or reverend in front of their names, but on a few occasions I probably have. But there are some, there are some key people, you know, who were, uh, in addition to McGlynn, who were really strong supporters of Henry George. Well, uh, there are a lot of them in, in the first year of the standard uh, and across a, a whole bunch of di different religious groups, uh, in, including the Swedenborgians. Um, on the Swedenborgians that, that, that sound, sound, looks like it's going to have a fair amount of material that relevant to, to, to what we're talking about. Uh, this is uh, Marty. Uh, I just wanted to relay a, uh, a, a story about an article that was recently written uh, by a, a professor from the, the Bard School and uh, <clears throat> and Bard the, College, the Bard College, uh, Randall Ray. He's associated with the MMT, but uh, the there was a reference to the social gospel movement. Yeah, and, Russian, Russian, yeah. and uh, in reference, he, they made reference to Leo the Thirteenth. Uh, was uh, 1891, uh, which yes. was the uh, uh, attack on Henry George. And it is as if that, that they really didn't understand what they were talking about because uh, the Catholic Church was not coming out and being a, I don't know, a progressive voice, but really a, a reaction to uh, Henry George and others that were being sincere about it. So. It was almost like they just pulled it out of the air just to say something. And uh, I, I don't know, I thought it was kind of a travesty. Well, George wrote a, a very fine rebuttal to that. Yeah. And, yeah. and that would be an excellent, you know, treatment uh, by, by some historian, you know, who, who could write a really, really great book, you know, talking about that interaction between Henry George and the Pope, and then you know, bringing in all the other religious figures who, you know, sided with Henry George's analysis, yeah. you know, beginning with, you know, uh, Bishop Nolte in Ireland and, and the Glen. I mean, there's just a rich history there that, that if, if, if it could get into the hands of uh, religious oriented people who are still open minded, that it could, you know, have some effect. Um, I, it just, I'm working on a project right now. I don't know if it'll have any, have any, if it'll find any, any uh, 
survival or not, but I found in, in the September, October 1938 issue of Land and Freedom, the, uh, a play script. It was written by a woman named Norma Cooley, and it was, it's titled, And the Fruits Thereof. Um, and it's, it's a pretty good morality tale that leads to endorsement of the single tax. And I'm trying to do, uh, I'm trying to use a, you know, my normal PowerPoint structure to, to deliver the play. And the shortcoming is that, that I'm, I'm playing all the characters. And you know, so there's only one voice. I, I'd love to have, there are, the characters in the play are an angel, a minister, and Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah. So, you know, I, I haven't figured out how to do this to, to actually get to other people online with me to record the, the uh, to read the, uh, the play, you know, and, and take roles because I, I've done it once already uh, by myself and Deb, my wife has listened to it and said, this is really boring. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I I'd think it, to give it a try. Yeah. I don't know how, how we do that. that that's, I know how you do it. Zoom. Zoom. Okay. You do it by Zoom and we can do like basically a play a, that we can operate where it's, you know, if we, if people want to come in on it, but it will not be broadcast because we're going to experiment with how we do the timing of it and each person reading that and have this just as like a panel that could be done relatively easy but we would have to experiment with it. That's well, here's, here's what, what I've done. I, I will, uh, you know, when you have some interest in this, so I'll send yeah, you, yeah. I'll send you a copy and sue a copy. Uh, yeah. I'm going to do one more recording of my own, you know, and, and this is, this is again, a, a, I use PowerPoint converted to video. Uh, I won't convert it to video though, but, but basically what it has is has images on the screen that, that, try to tell the story in, in a less uh, boring way than simply showing a, an image of an angel or a priest or a minister, et cetera. But anyway, it would be great if, if a couple of you would. Uh, would yeah, I'd be happy to help out on something Sounds like, like fun. that. Yeah, also, okay. just so you know, you talked about religion. Um, yesterday, Ted and I were on the call with uh, the uh, Alana Hartzog and Wendy Rockwell. And Wendy and I are both Quaker, so we are talking about, uh, about getting a hold of. I guess there's, there's some British Quakers that are into LVT and how we connect with them. And so she, Wendy, and I are going to try to work on that aspect of okay. Um, well, that, here's what I had in mind for the for the um, sort of up to to use this play and the, a video recording of it for various members of our Georgia's community who belong to a church or a synagogue or, or um, any kind of a ministry, whatever it might be, mm -hmm. uh, to, to organize some kind of a program to show it and then have a discussion about it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's basic. It, when, when, you, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you get it um, and, you, and you watch it and listen to it, you'll, you'll get the sense of, of how well written this was, but how to dramatically deliver it is is another challenge. Well, we'll, we'll try it. We can play. We can play. Hey, we I are wonder, getting close up to this. I wonder if Nora Cooley was the wife of Stoughton Cooley. I believe so. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. I should tell us who our thank our sponsors. Uh, for 2020 and yeah ready. thanks for hanging in there everybody yes, with us yeah, uh, we, we, you most, have... mostly everyone on the call has been very quiet i thought we'd have a lot more rigorous inquiries but maybe that's because when uh, and i have done such a great job you don't have any questions <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's good. we haven't done much of a job at all, <laughs> all, right. all right. one of the two yeah before you leave uh, i was curious where the mclean monument is um, it's, it's not, it's not in Woodlawn, let's see. I thought it was in uh, Central Park. 
No. What, no? Woodlawn, he's, is he, he's not, he's, it's in Woodlawn Cemetery, I believe, but he's Woodlawn. not buried there. Not Greenwood. No, not Greenwood. Okay. Um, and hang on. See didn't we visit one. that? Wait a minute. Didn't we visit that in 1997? When we did the I wasn't. Course. That was you before my. You, you could remember 1997, Sue. Congratulations. I just remember that <laughs> there was one. The, uh, one of the guys went around looking at the the sculpture. In in fact, just wouldn't it be in that church that is now closed down? That was no. close to. St. Stephen's? Yeah, St. Stephen's. No, it, it, it's not. Uh, which, and that's a good thing that it's not. Um, uh, hold on. I just learned this recently and I shared it with somebody who, who was, was looking for the information. So. Oh, I, there's another uh, coincidence that's interesting is that the current address of the Henry George School of Social Science is 149 East 38th Street and St. Stephen's Church where uh, McGlynn preached at was uh, 149 East 28th Street. Um, I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah, well, it was right down the street from, from, from the earlier location, from two earlier locations, actually. Same yeah. address. Yeah. And, and I'm not finding, well, let's see. You find it. Actually, because it's recent enough, I'm, I'm going to try it another way. Okay. While you're looking for that, I might as well thank our sponsors uh, for 2020. Uh, Polly Cleveland, uh, Gib Halverson, Sue Hunzel, Mark Sullivan, Asimo Yuihara, Common Ground USA, uh, Earthshoring Associates, Henry George Institute, the International Union for Land Value Taxation, Public Revenue Education Council, and the Robert Schalkenbach Foundation. And we hope that other people this coming year will become sponsors. So, and we do have an event coming up uh, July, uh, excuse me, January 21st. We hope to have Catherine Passmore and um, Brian Kavanaugh talking about um, what's happening in Australia that they finally have gotten LBT enacted in several places. So that'll be fun. That'd be great. Yeah. yeah. We just have to work out the time. We've got Catherine. We've got to work it out uh, and things. And incidentally, Peter Smith does believe in the cat because he has a black cat by the name of Henry. <laughs> I am a, I am a, I am a, one of Henry's groupies. So I like this kitten. This kitten has a, got a lot of stuff to him. So, all right. Did you find that win? Uh, no, not yet. <laughs> well, if you have, if you have young uh, members in your family, your own kids, grandchildren or whatever, get them to take a look at uh, the Peter Smith video. Yeah, it, it, it is quite yeah. Well, it, it's you know it's that garage uh, band type music, not not necessarily my favorite, but but uh, working with the tune for a couple of days it started to get to me. <laughs> oh. yeah. Okay, you find it? No, I haven't found it yet. But we'll... <laughs> all right, if we close, I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you, Marty. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks for hanging in there, all gang. Right. Hey, yes, thank got... you. Yeah. All right. I appreciate everybody's uh, participation. Gonna, well, I hope you got something out of it. What yeah. we're going to do is Paul Justice is on the, here with me, and we're actually going to do this almost basically verbatim. I might cut out a few little things, but we will have this up shortly on the CGO website. So thanks an awful lot, gang. Bye. Okay, so good night. Good, good night, night. Wayne. Good, good night, night everybody. Thank you.